lo anunciamos será brindado en inglés completamente por Karen Gibbs y Colvin English de By Hand Consulting. Ellos tienen una muy amplia experiencia en trabajo con empresas de productos hechos a mano en todo el mundo, básicamente. Y pues el día de hoy nos estarán compartiendo información muy importante para que ustedes conozcan cuál es la situación actual del mercado internacional para nuestro tipo de productos y una perspectiva global para las marcas de artesanos. Entonces, súper importante que tomen nota de todos los conocimientos que ellos van a transmitir. Y agradeceré que si tienen alguna pregunta, um, puedan escribirla dentro del chat para que podamos abordarlas todas al final de la charla. Entonces, pues, eh, sin más protocolo, los dejo eh, con Karen Gibbs. Karen, ¿qué hacen la palabra? Hello, everybody. Thank you so much um, for joining us and Monica and the whole team at Ag Export. Thank you um, for inviting us to participate in the New World Craft virtual um, event. So I um, welcome to everybody. I think Monica explained. Um, but if you have any questions during my presentation, if you can put them in the chat box on Zoom, I will be sure to answer your questions at the end. So what I suggest we do is um, I'll speak for about 30 minutes, um, sharing what is happening in the US market today, and then we will open it up for questions from everybody and a discussion. So many of you or some of you might have joined our webinar earlier this spring. Uh, this is an updated presentation and perspective on the US market today. And you'll see some things have changed and some things have stayed very much the same. So welcome to everybody and thank you for joining us. So what we will do today in this presentation is I will do three things. One is I will summarize some of the key data that we have collected about the US retail market today and retail sales. Secondly, we'll highlight best practices from some artisan and handmade brands who we believe are leading in the market today. And third, we'll share our recommendations with you for what we believe global folk art and artisan brands can do in the market right now. So the one thing that we know in the market today, it, the one thing we can be certain of is uncertainty. The words uncertainty and unprecedented meaning never seen before, are the two words that seem to dominate all retail reports and accounts today. We live in a time when people are hoping for the best and preparing for the worst. I wish that we had a crystal ball that could predict what's going to happen in the market uh, today, but we simply don't. What we're seeing now in terms of the pandemic's impact on the US market and on the mentality of US consumers and Americans has never been seen before. So we really have nothing to compare it to. So as we live in this moment of uncertainty, it means that things can change day by day, week by week in ways that we don't predict. So, and this uncertainty affects everybody. So it doesn't matter if you're selling in the luxury market or if you're selling in the mass market. It doesn't matter if you're trying to reach people in urban areas or in rural areas. It doesn't matter if you're trying to sell them products for their home or products for their fashion. Everybody seems to be experiencing this same level of uncertainty. There is no part of the market or our population that is 
protected from it right now. So I just start this presentation with that idea that we're living in uncertain times and we try to be as prepared as we can, but things are changing quickly. If I look out at the companies that I think are doing well right now, it's those companies who are being very nimble, very flexible. They're innovating and changing and trying new things because they know that tomorrow is uncertain. The companies that seem to be uh, not doing as well today are the ones who are paralyzed by this uncertainty and are waiting for things to get more certain. And the fact is they're just not going to get more certain. So there's no better time to act and try something new and try something different than today or tomorrow. So, but some things we know for certain um, in the market and we can see them by yeah. these very comprehensive retail reports that are published by the US government on a monthly basis. And what we see is that US retail sales declined significantly in April. There was this V, like the letter V, like shape in the graph where you see retail sales. So it dipped by almost uh, 15, over 15% from March until April. And then starting in May, retail sales started to climb back. And now we see that US retail sales are back to pre-pandemic levels as of the end of July. So part of this could be because we had an economic stimulus plan that provided extra unemployment benefits to Americans who had lost their jobs, and also stimulus packages for businesses. So some people believe that, this, um, that these retail sales are subsidized by that stimulus package. That economic stimulus package expired at the end of July. So we will see how retail sales continue after this. U.S. retail sales represent approximately two-thirds of the U.S. economy. So the U.S. economy is based on consumer purchasing. We're a consumer economy. So when we see these numbers dip down to 15%, the economy gets scared, right? Investment companies and um, consumers get very scared. So we're happy to see these levels back up. Keep in mind that these retail sales represent all retail sales, um, including food, um, but not including cars or gasoline. So this is not just about products that are related to handmade products, but it's all products. So that's a hopeful indicator that overall our economy is doing okay and that our sales are back up. However, the way that US consumers shop is changing and we believe that this change will become permanent to some degree. So one way that US consumers are shopping differently is they are spending more time and more money shopping online. So if we look at non-store retail sales, so those are retail sales that took place not in a physical store, they increased by 25% when you compare July 2019 to July 2020. So this is a huge increase. This is indicating that people are spending both more money shopping online because they're shopping from their homes and they're not going out to retail establishments as much. It also means they're spending more time online. So they're spending more time researching products, exploring brands, 
discovering new designers, literally traveling the world on their computers, partly to entertain themselves and partly to buy things that they need or want. So this is, represents a significant opportunity for brands that are located outside of the US because we know that consumers are becoming more and more comfortable purchasing things online. Another way that, uh, that consumers, the way and the locations where consumers are shopping has changed is that the department stores and shopping malls and some of these legacy retail stores are declaring bankruptcy or closing their doors. And it seems like every week there's a new company that announces its bankruptcy. These are just a few names of companies who have declared bankruptcy or are closing their stores in the US market. So Pier 1 Imports, Brooks Brothers, Neiman Marcus, Sur La Table, J. Crew, J. C. Pennies. These are very well-known names in the retail world. And you'll see these companies represent all categories and all positions in the marketplace. They are both luxury brands like Neiman Marcus, as well as mass market brands like JC Penney's. Their product, their companies that are both selling home products like Pier One Imports, as well as clothing products like an apparel like J. Crew and Brooks Brothers. So no part of the market is protected from the fact that some of these large legacy stores are not doing well. What's interesting is that many of these stores were not doing well before COVID-19 hit the market. So many of them weren't doing well because they had lost touch with what the US consumer wanted in terms of a product and in terms of a shopping experience. So they became more focused, we believe, on selling and on price and less on innovation and interesting shopping experiences. Many of these stores are also very important parts of shopping malls in the US. So large destination shopping malls are also really struggling during COVID. So <clears throat> when we look, however, and we think that, okay, retail sales are back up to pre-pandemic levels. And we know that people are shopping online more, and we know they're not shopping at these large legacy stores. So it makes us question, where are they shopping? And what we see from anecdotal stories is that they are shopping um, directly with brands. And they're shopping with more unique, innovative, socially responsible companies. And they're shopping from small retail stores who have an online presence. So it's a real opportunity for more innovative, socially minded, design driven, new, young and small brands to have an opportunity in the market with these changes. So it's not only how people are shopping, but it's also what they're buying that is changing. So we see that sales are strong or increasing for products related to building um, houses, making improvements on houses and improvements to gardens. Of course, the gardening will slow down with a move into fall and winter but people have been spending a lot of money on their homes because they're spending so much time at home. We also see a big increase in grocery stores because people are uh, making meals at home more than they went out in the past. So everything related to cooking and dining at home as well as those groceries. 
We see an increase in sporting goods. So products for playing sports, for exercising, for staying healthy during this time. We see sales increases with hobby and craft stores because people are doing more arts and crafts at home. And we see sales, interestingly, in increase with for musical instruments. People are learning how to play music. Sales are weak or declining at department stores, like we just mentioned, and also apparel stores and fashion accessories are really struggling right now. People are not leaving their houses as much. They're not going to work. They're not going to the movies or theater. So they're not getting dressed up as much. So they spend money. They're not spending money on clothes unless it's clothing related to staying at home and being comfortable. So despite all these changes and some bad news that we've gone through, there are definitely some bright spots. <clears throat> and here are what some of those brands are doing. So people are investing significantly and quickly in digital marketing. So one example is that we see brick and mortar stores that are opening or expanding their online shopping. So here is an example of a small independently owned retail store called Driftlist Style. They opened one year ago and after COVID hit, they immediately opened up a small online store to sell to their customers and to continue to grow their customer base. We also see people <clears throat> creating engaging content and sharing it on social media. And it's interesting because this content is not about selling your product. It's more about engaging your customer with interesting information that's related to your brand and your values and your mission. So on the left, we have an example from a company called Goop that is all about uh, healthy, self-care lifestyle. So they interview some of their staff on, on how they're organizing their home and how they're keeping their home clean and calm and inviting during this time. So they have done this whole series of interviews. On the right-hand side is an example from Injiri, which is an Indian clothing brand and they are using their social media outlets to share information, photos, videos, and references that talk about the history and the techniques and the motifs of the traditional textiles that they work with in India. So both types of content are very relevant to each of these brands, um, but both types of content is really intended to engage and entertain and not necessarily to sell products. <clears throat> Here's another example from a brand called Tantuvi, which is a clothing, oh, pardon me, it's a hand woven rug company. And they did this really fun campaign last spring where they sent out the patterns for their rugs to their, they shared them on social media and through their email. And they wanted their customers to color in the patterns to help them come up with new colorways for their rugs. And their customers would then post it on social media and tag Tantubi, and then were entered into a drawing to win a prize. So just a fun way to stay engaged with your customers during this time. Here's another example. This is a company called Maptope. They're based here in the US and they make bandanas, which is very convenient because a lot of people are using bandanas as face masks these days. And their bandanas are screen printed copies of maps. And so they created 
coloring pages out of their screen print designs and allow their customers to download those coloring pages from their website and color them. So this is an activity that's much more geared towards kids, children, and families, but also important because so many of their customers have children at home that they need more activities to keep them entertained. So another fun way. So another thing that we see companies doing, everybody doing basically right now, who's staying relevant in the marketplace is coming up with new products. You know that product innovation and coming up with new designs and new products has always been important in order to stay relevant and exciting to your customers. In today's market, it's even more so. And the product innovation that we see is not just about design, but it's also about, about the function of the product. So we see many companies producing products for safety, for health and safety, uh, as it relates to the pandemic. So we see distilleries converting their production to making hand sanitizer. We see apparel companies who are partnering with um, hospitals in order to make protective uh, hospital gowns and gear for healthcare workers. Here we see Anshal Projects, which is a brand here in the US that works with a cooperative in India. And we see Tribal Textiles, which is a textile company from Zambia. Both of these companies traditionally make home products, but they very quickly converted their production to, or some of their production to making masks. And this has uh, got them lots of orders right at the beginning. Tribal Textiles within the first couple of weeks of launching these masks sold 8,000. So the, the sales of their masks are continuing because it looks like wearing masks is going to be a permanent part of our lifestyle in the US for quite a while. Other product innovation that we see is this whole WFH work from home trend. I got another two emails in my inbox today, one from Pottery Barn, the other from West Elm with WFH in the title. So this is not going away. Many US companies, virtually all non-essential US companies back in March and April sent their employees to work from home. And now in some places, companies have gone back to working in the office at a very limited capacity. But some of the largest US companies like Microsoft, Apple, Facebook, Google, they are telling their employees to work from home in until the end of 2020. Others are saying until June of 2021. And some companies are telling their employees to work from home permanently. So this means that people are now investing in creating home offices. So they're either converting spaces in their house into a home office, or we see a lot of people moving into larger houses that have space for home office. So we see home sales actually being quite strong in the US right now. We see people moving out of cities and into rural areas or suburban areas where they have more space so that they can work from home. And we see people buying a lot of products to create beautiful, efficient, inspiring workspaces. So if you have any product that relates to creating a home office or could decorate a home office, or it could be something that people could wear while they're working from home, picturing that product, photographing that product and representing it in a home office setting will help you appeal to what US customers are thinking about and need today. 
here are just some examples of products that can go on the desk or are related to work from home. Uh, it doesn't have to just be furniture or desk items. It could be artwork that you could hang on the wall. It could be things that you could wear while you're working from home. But this is definitely an area where people, U.S. consumers and Americans are spending a lot of time and money investigating. Another area of product innovation that we see is around puzzles and games and craft activities. So here we see Noonday Collection that is a fair trade fashion brand that's, um, that's making uh, jewelry. They s actually started selling this build your own bracelet kit and immediately sold out in the first 24 hours of launching it. Puzzles have been remarkably popular. They say in the month of April that puzzles basically sold out in the United States, right? So these are all kinds of things that are fun activities to do at home, how to entertain yourself at home. Some people are selling not just masks, but kits in order to make masks, um, which we see from Indigo Handloom here. Um, Urban Outfitters, which is a very large retail store in the U.S., you can see they have a whole department now on their st online store that's all related to fun and games. So you can see some of the categories um, that, uh, that, that fall into that. So it's both games and activities and puzzles and sports activities. Meso Goods, which is an absolutely beautiful brand. In, from Guatemala. I was very impressed when they put together this kit and they sell beautiful home decor as many of you know. Um, but they also put together this kit which was a way that people could make their own wall hanging at home. So I thought this was a great example of how Meso uh, innovated its products and came up with something that appealed to what U.S. consumers need right now. Another area of product innovation is everything related to self-care and comfort. So it's a very stressful time for everybody around the world right now with this pandemic. So things that can help you feel calm and soothed and comfortable are very popular. So that can mean candles and lotions and comfortable clothing and anything to make your home and you feel cozy and um, and relaxed. Um, I think as we go into the winter time, we're going to see a lot of people buying fuzzy slippers and fuzzy pillows and blankets to just feel comfortable and and warm and comforted at home. Other areas of product innovation include anything related to cooking at home. So we see sales of not just groceries, but um, interesting spices and serving utensils and tools for the kitchen. And uh, all of those are increasing right now too. I think that connect, so sharing recipes of traditional um, food products, uh, sharing, um, you know, showing traditional Guatemalan dishes uh, in serving dishes that maybe you make. Um, anything that would help people. We know that people are spending more time cooking at home. So anything that you can provide in terms of content or product that would relate to that would help you gain attention. Anything um, for the home cleaning products, uh, hand towels, um, uh, uh, you know, towels, blankets, sort of those essential items for home, anything related to spending time with family, exercise, or gardening are all categories I think that have uh, gained a lot of attention and will continue to. So as we've talked about in the past, there's a lot of discussion right now 
of whether or not there is a silver lining to this pandemic. And it is our belief that yes, indeed there is. Um, one of the, this podcast with Lee Edelcourt on the Business of Fashion podcast was very interesting. Uh, she believes that the pandemic has made people slow down and it's made them consider their impact on the environment and on the world and the connection to um, taking care of our planet and people um, and having basically buying fewer things but buying better things. She also believes that there's a very uh, bright future for handmade products, for makers, for artisans in, in the US and in the global market. So there's also a, a lot of discussion around sustainability and climate change and environmental issues, particularly in the U.S. right now. We have, um, we have unprecedented wildfires in the western region of the U.S., and that has only accelerated the conversation around climate change and how real that is. So many apparel companies before the pandemic had really embraced sustainability and environmental responsibility. And it seems that the pandemic is only accelerating those discussions and that interest. So what I would say that the silver lining of the pandemic is, is that consumers are spending more time and are caring more about the impact of their purchase. They're spending more time researching it, and they're spending more time intentionally spending their dollars on products that are going to make the difference in the world that they want to see. So I believe this is a real opportunity for handmade brands around the world. It also is a challenge to all of you to be able to explain in your mission and in your brand statement and in your brand manifesto how your products are sustainable and responsible and unique and handmade. So it's an opportunity, but it also means you need to market and promote yourself to this opportunity. We see that what William Sonoma, one of the largest retail companies in the US, launched their sustainability report recently, in the midst of the pandemic, actually. And their, their sustainability strategy is anchored on three topics. One is the planet, two is people, and three is purpose. So I encourage you to read their report and look at the language that they use and how they define sustainability because it's an important uh, understanding for how comprehensive this idea of sustainability is and all the opportunities it provides to global handmade businesses. There is also a lot of discussion right now in the US that it's really companies that have a very clear and very authentic sense of purpose that are the ones that are succeeding right now. So purpose means having some goal to your business above and beyond making profit. We see interest in benefit corporation companies, B Corp companies increasing. We see increase in fair trade companies increasing. And we also see big statements from major investment companies talking about how important it is to have a clear purpose to your business and reactivating that, right? So rephrasing it, redefining it, restating it to your customers is a way that you can connect with your customers now and push your business into the forefront of their attention. So very often artisan businesses have a purpose, right? A very clear purpose that's around generating income for a particular population of people or preserving or innovating traditional craft techniques or doing something that is authentic to the designer and the, the brand, you know, the owner of the business. Very often there's very clear purpose and mission. However, communicating it in a clear and effective way 
and promoting yourself around that mission is an area where many artisan brands need to improve. So having your purpose is the first step. Uh, defining and articulating your purpose is the second step. And then the third step is actually communicating that purpose to your customers and followers. So this is something that um, I believe is just imperative to do for your future success and relevance in the market. So what can you do right now? Um, and starting today, starting tomorrow, starting next week, um, is stay connected to your customers. Um, we know that a lot of small retail stores in the US are still struggling. Even though those pre-pandemic retail sales are up, it has left out many retail stores and many different channels in the market. It. So your customers, probably the vast majority of them are still really struggling. A, are probably so busy trying to innovate and come up with new things that they need your support. So we recommend three different types of messages to your customers. So explain and demonstrate what you're doing um, to respond to this cri crisis and how it's impacted your business and, and what you're doing. And through this, you're able to state your company values and purpose, right? Show how you are fulfilling them during this time. The second round of messages is really to empathize and innovate with your customers, right? That message that we're all in this together, we are here for you, um, are very important right now. And then suggest new products or new content for their social media or new ways of communicating together or partnering together, right? And there's no, this is a time when everybody is trying out new things. So there's no expectation of perfection right now, but there is an expectation that you're going to try new things to stay in touch with them. And then be prepared. So I know that flights to Guatemala are opening up, I believe, this week again, right, which will mean hopefully more shipments going in and out and hopefully, hopefully at some point more customers coming. So just keeping that message that you are, you're out there, you're prepared, you're ready to do more business is really important. Um, then, uh, you know, here are some examples, right? You can send this out via newsletter. Here's a newsletter from Sedai Designs. Here's a newsletter from Sasha, which is a major fair trade organization in India. Um, so really take, uh, take an assessment, right? Take some time to think about what tools do you have right now to stay connected with your customers? Do you stay connected by email? Do you stay connected by social media? <clears throat> Do you stay connected by WhatsApp messages? Do you stay connected by FaceTiming them, by doing Zoom calls, right? Really take an assessment of what are your channels of communication and populate those channels with those kinds of messages. So that brings me to the end of this presentation. Um, you know, it's, it's, um, it's an, unusual time. I think when we come out of this, I do honestly believe that there will be more opportunity for authentic, handmade, socially responsible, environmentally responsible products in the marketplace. And your job right now is stay connected to your customers and continue to innovate in ways that show how dynamic you are. So that ends my presentation and I would be happy to open it up to any questions. Also, please feel free to visit our website or email us with any questions that you may have after this presentation. But for now, does anybody have any questions? Thank you so much, Karen. Um, we do have some questions, so let me just read it out for you. Uh, 
Para todos los que han preguntado, la presentación no se va a compartir. Esperamos poder subirla eh, dentro de unos días a nuestro sitio web de la feria, que es el que ustedes ya conocen, ¿verdad? www.nwcguatemala.com para que desde ahí la puedan visualizar. Karen, I was, uh, was telling them about the presentation and uh, that we're not going to share it individually, but we're going to upload it to our website so they can check it out from there. Great. Awesome. And I see that we have one question here, which is, can you recommend some brands that are doing well um, and are good examples when I mentioned shopping experience? Um, well, certainly there was quite a few brands mentioned in in this, but I can um, I can add a couple of slides in there um, so that when you download the the presentation, I'll include some more in the in the presentation so you can see some other brands. Um, in terms of shopping experience and and what the shopping experience is that I think most consumers are are seeking right now. First is they are seeking a shopping experience that's very convenient to do online. So it's easy to do online. And the second is they're seeking a shopping experience where they can really connect with the product and the brand so that they have information about that product. Um, who makes it? What are the materials? What's the origin of it? What were the, how was that made? Um, what's the impact in terms of the environment or people, um, you know, really not just selling a product, but selling a product and a story with it. So, and clever ways to include that information. Any other questions? Yes, Monica Acosta is asking, uh, is saying our biggest issue is delivery time for our products to the U.S. Mm -hmm. How do you see this from the U.S. perspective? Is delivery time like the amount of time that it's taking? I guess so, yes. Yeah, so delivery time is all about communication. So anybody who is, um, you know, it's about establishing expectations and then it's about communicating. So if your delivery time is long, you need to make sure that's, that immediately you tell customers that. So it has to be part of their shopping experience that they know right away. So if, you know, co consumers are, are willing to wait longer for products so long as they know that's part of the shopping experience from the beginning. So you need to set that Ex expectation early in the shopping experience. So maybe that's even adding, you know, a page to your website or a page to your catalog that's some, that says um, how to shop with us, right? So that they know right away. So that expectation is set. And then the second part of that is that if it takes longer to fulfill your orders, you just need to keep customers updated on the status of the order. So if they place an order and they don't hear from you for four weeks and all of a sudden they get the product, they could be upset. But if they place an order and every week you send them an email with the status of their order, then they're following along, right? They have trust in you. So I think it's not a problem to have a long delivery time but you need to set the expectation early on with the customer and then continue to communicate with them and provide updates. No sé si alguien más tiene alguna otra pregunta. Ah, sí, aquí veo una. Um, Dice, what advice could you give us if we are seeking to get into new or big retail brands? Is it more difficult now to connect with them as they can't actually see our products in person? How could we turn this into an opportunity? Yeah, you have to invest in digital marketing. <clears throat> um, any brand that's going to stay relevant in the market today has to invest in digital marketing. So. Um, I think that um, 
I think if you want to sell, many of them are having problems right now. So be very careful about which retail store you're trying to do business with because a lot of them are struggling. So just make sure that they have a really, um, really good online sales and that they also have a very clear kind of brand statement, mission statement, um, sustainability, uh, you know, uh, goals, um, that they are just staying very dynamic that way, because those are the companies that are going to succeed. We also see a lot of mass market, low price retailers doing well, but that's not the kind of customer that you want to be selling to. So, um, the, then it's, um, you know, it's about, you know, that your buyer most likely will not be buying, placing an order from you in person. So it is participating in um, virtual trade show events like New World Craft. It's connecting with that customer via those platforms and then staying in communication with them through whatever channel seems the most appropriate for you, whether it's email marketing, um, just individual outreach. Um, be prepared to send samples to customers, even if they didn't request those samples, because we know that getting a product into a buyer's hands in, you know, uh, will help them connect you and relate to the product. So um, it is absolutely an opportunity, but you just have to be prepared to be very proactive in marketing yourself electronically. Perfect. Thank you, Karen. Um, does anyone else have any question for Karen? Well, if not, thank you, Karen, so much. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you Amazing. for having us. Yes. No, we're, we're really honored to have you here and it was all very interesting and I bet really helpful for all artists and companies participating in the New Craft and in Central America in general. So thank you so much for being here and being part of this movement. Great. Thank you so much. Gracias a todos por participar y como les mencionaba, esperam, uh, esperamos poder subir la presentación en unos días a nuestro sitio web para que desde ahí puedan visualizarla nuevamente. Gracias a todos y que tengan un buen día. Bye, Karen.